1 Chronicles chapter 4 verses 5 through 43. And Asher the father of Tekoa had two wives, Hela and Nara. And Nara bare him Ahuzam, and Hefer, and Temeni, and Hayahashatari. These were the sons of Nara. And the sons of Hela were, Zareth, and Jezor, and Ethnon. And Cuz begat Anub, and Zobeba, and the families of Aharhel the son of Haram. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And Kelub the brother of Shua begat Mahir, which was the father of Eshton. And Eshton begat Bethrepha, and Pasea, and Tehina the father of Ironahash. These are the men of Rika. And the sons of Kenaz, Othniel, and Sariah, and the sons of Othniel, Hathath. And Meonathai begat Ophra, and Sariah begat Joab, the father of the valley of Sherashim, for they were craftsmen. And the sons of Caleb the son of Jephunneh, Eru, Elah, and Nam, and the sons of Elah, even Kenaz. And the sons of Jehaleel, Ziph, and Zipha, Tyria, and Asariel. And the sons of Ezra were, Chater, and Mered, and Ephor, and Jalen, and she bare Miriam, and Shammai, and Ishba the father of Eshtemoa. And his wife Jehudijah bare Jared the father of Geter, and Heber the father of Socho, and Jekuthiel the father of Zenoah. And these are the sons of Bithiah the daughter of Pharaoh, which Mered took. And the sons of his wife Hodiah the sister of Nam, the father of Kala the Garmite, and Eshtemoa the Machathite. And the sons of Shimon were, Amnon, and Rinna, Ben-Anon, and Tylon. And the sons of Ishi were, Zaheth, and Benzoeth. The sons of Shelah the son of Judah were, Ur the father of Lecha, and Lada the father of Moresha, and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen, of the house of Ashbia. And Jo-Kim, and the men of Chozeba, and Joash, and Saraph, who had the dominion in Moab, and Jashubilahem. And these are ancient things. These were the potters, and those that dwelt among plants and hedges, there they dwelt with the king for his work. The sons of Simeon were, Nimuel, and Jaman, Jerib, Zerah, and Shal. Shalom his son, Mibsam his son, Mishma his son. And the sons of Mishma, Hamuel his son, Zachar his son, Shimei his son. And Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but his brethren had not many children, neither did all their family multiply, like to the children of Judah. And they dwelt at Beersheba, and Moladah, and Hazershul. And at Bilha, and at Ezem, and at Tolad. And at Beduel, and at Horma, and at Zeklog. And at Bethmark Eboth, and Hazerzesim, and at Bethbere, and at Sharim. These were their cities unto the reign of David. And their villages were, Etam, and Ain, Rimmon, and Tachin, and Ashan, five cities. And all their villages that were round about the same cities, unto Baal. These were their habitations, and their genealogy. And Meshabab, and Jamlek, and Joshah, the son of Amaziah. And Joel, and Jehu the son of Josibiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Azil. And Elianai, and Jacoba, and Jeshoheah, and Asaiah, and Adiel, and Jesamiel, and Benaiah. And Ziza the son of Shiphi, the son of Alon, the son of Jediah, the son of Shimri, the son of Shemaiah. These mentioned by their names were princes in their families, and the house of their fathers increased greatly. And they went to the entrance of Geter, even unto the east side of the valley, to seek pasture for their flocks. And they found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide, and quiet, and peaceable, for they of Ham had dwelt there of old. And these written by name came in the days of Hezekiah king of Judah, and smote their tents, and the habitations that were found there, and destroyed them utterly unto this day, and dwelt in their rooms, because there was pasture there for their flocks. And some of them, even of the sons of Simeon, five hundred men, went to Mount Seir, having for their captains Pelatiah, and Neariah, and Rephiah, and Uziel, the sons of Ishi. And they smote the rest of the Amalekites that were escaped, and dwelt there unto this day. 1 Chronicles chapter 5 verses 1-17. through 17. Now the sons of Reuben the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was given unto the sons of Joseph the son of Israel, and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after the birthright. For Judah prevailed above his brethren, 
and of him came the chief ruler, but the birthright was Joseph's. The sons, I say, of Reuben the firstborn of Israel were, Hanok, and Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Joel, Shemaiah his son, Gog his son, Shimei his son. Micah his son, Reiah his son, Baal his son. Bera his son, whom Tilgath Pilnza king of Assyria carried away captive, he was prince of the Reubenites. And his brethren by their families, when the genealogy of their generations was reckoned, were the chief, Jael, and Zechariah. And Bela the son of Azaz, the son of Shema, the son of Joel, who dwelt in Aror, even unto Nebo and Bamian. And eastward he inhabited unto the entering in of the wilderness from the river Euphrates, because their cattle were multiplied in the land of Gilead. And in the days of Saul they made war with the Hagarites, who fell by their hand, and they dwelt in their tents throughout all the east land of Gilead. And the children of Gad dwelt over against them, in the land of Bashan unto Salkah. Joel the chief, and Shapham the next, and Jani, and Shaphat in Bashan. And their brethren of the house of their fathers were, Michael, and Meshulam, and Sheba, and Jorai, and Jachin, and Zia, and Heber, seven. These are the children of Abihail the son of Huri, the son of Jeroah, the son of Gilead, the son of Michael, the son of Jeshishai, the son of Jado, the son of Buz. I the son of Abdiel, the son of Guni, chief of the house of their fathers. And they dwelt in Gilead in Bashan, and in her towns, and in all the suburbs of Sharon, upon their borders. All these were reckoned by genealogies in the days of Jotham king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam king of Israel. Acts chapter 25. Now when Festus was come into the province, after three days he ascended from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief of the Jews informed him against Paul, and besought him, and desired favor against him, that he would send for him to Jerusalem, laying wait in the way to kill him. But Festus answered, that Paul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself would depart shortly thither. Let them therefore, said he, which among you are able, go down with me, and accuse this man, if there be any wickedness in him. And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day sitting on the judgment seat commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about, and laid many and grievous complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul, and said, Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged, to the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, or have committed any thing worthy of death, I refuse not to die, but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, Hast thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. About whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him, to whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die, before that he which is accused have the accusers face to face, and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither, without any delay on the morrow I sat on the judgment seat, and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I supposed. But had certain questions against him of their own superstition, and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, with great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing, with the chief captains, and principal men of the city, at Festus' commandment Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man, 
about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem, and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, and that he himself hath appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him. Of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and specially before thee, O King Agrippa, that, after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. Psalms chapter 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies, make thy way straight before my face for there is no faithfulness in their mouth, their inward part is very wickedness, their throat is an open sepulchre, they flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God, let them fall by their own counsels, cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice, let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them, let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous, with favour wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle.